everyone, welcome back to the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we are working on a really cute piece. So this is a little desk and this came to me as a brand new piece of furniture. I literally unwrapped it, um, unboxed it, unpackaged it, and um, I'm going to make over a brand new piece of furniture, which is absolutely an option. It's great quality furniture. Um, this is actually a project that I'm working on with an interior decorator. So we're doing a couple of pieces that are going to match in finishes, although they are not from a matching set of furniture. Um, finishes are our way that you can unite mismatched furniture and make them look like a complete set. This is going to be for a brand new bedroom makeover that I'm super excited to be a part of. Um, my inspiration for this piece is going to be a beautiful linen bed frame and some really soft neutral wallpaper. And then I'm going to pull in some pops of color using some florals that the customer chose. So these are just a couple of options that we're going to employ on our desk makeover. Um, but you guys check this out and um, I think it's going to be a really fun process. Here's the piece that we're going to be working on. This is a brand new desk that was sent to me by an interior decorator. It was ordered online and we're going to be customizing it to fit a bedroom that they're also designing. They started out by mailing me samples of fabric and the wallpaper that are going to be used in this room. And that's where I chose my color inspiration from. Next, I sent the customer several photos of different floral transfers that can be used and they chose some of their favorites. This piece arrived to me in a box. This is the original finish and it wasn't assembled. The legs were actually removed. So I decided to take advantage of that and I started out my painting process with the piece disassembled. Even though this is a brand new piece of furniture, I need to start out with a really thorough cleaning. So I'm using Green East Cleaner and I'm gonna wipe this down to remove any residue that might be left over from the manufacturing process. The next thing I'm gonna do is use my Surf Prep Sander and a 120 grit paper and I'm gonna give this a thorough scuff sanding to remove any shine that's on this finish. Next up, I'm gonna add two coats of Wiseau primer in light gray. Because these pieces are going to an interior decorator, I don't wanna skimp on any of the prep for this project. The primer is gonna help my paint adhere to the surface. You can see here where I'm starting out my painting with the legs detached, and I'm gonna paint inside of those corners so this project looks complete from beginning to end. I chose my paint colors using those samples that were sent to me by the designer, and I pulled out from that linen color this color from Wiesel Paint in their chalk synthesis line. This is called Restoration. And then I'm going to use a white called Isles Avenue as a subtle highlight to the center. Once my gray primer is nice and dry, I'm going to go ahead and start my painting process. And I start out by outlining the piece in my Restoration, and then I'm going to add a little bit of that white to the center. This is just my base coat, so I don't waste too much time working these paint colors together. I really just need to get a rough blend that decides where my paint colors are going to be laid out. I'm going to repeat the same blending process around all four sides of my piece, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a second coat that's a repeat of this first coat. This is a monochromatic paint finish, meaning that my two paint shades are just a variation of a shade of each other, and it's going to give a really subtle highlight to the center of this. This desk has a little bow to the front of it, and the matching nightstand that I'm doing to make these a set also does as well. And it's just going to lo look like the light in the room is hitting the bow of those pieces ever so slightly, so you really notice the shape of them. This two color paint blend is a really beginner friendly paint blend to start with when you're just starting out with your blending process. And that's because these two shades are really close together in color. The closer together that your paint colors are, the easier that they're gonna be to work together. And then because there's just two paint colors in this finish, there's less steps in the process that's gonna make it even more easy to get this look. I highly recommend when you're just starting out with your blending that you start with fewer colors and get used to just moving those colors together. And then as you start feeling more advanced, you can add in a third color and fourth and work your way up into those complex blended finishes. This was also a really great piece to work on because I had four sides to keep practicing this look over and over and over again. And practice is a great way to get really comfortable doing different finishes. I'm actually doing two pieces of furniture here and that's because these are going to flank a bed and one side is going to have a nightstand and the other side is going to have a desk. So even though these are starting out as not matched pieces of furniture, they're going to become a matched set using same paint finishes to unify them. My next step in this process is going to be to add some glaze to all the details and I'm using Wiseau glaze in this walnut color. It's the perfect shade to complement my paint finishes. That's because it's got a slight gray undertone so it's not going to look overly dirty on these details. Um, I did go ahead and seal my paint before I'm putting the glaze on and that's because chalky style paints are porous so they will have a tendency to absorb whatever you put over top. I want to be able to wipe this glaze away so I went ahead and sealed my paint. I brush on a coat of my glaze into all those details. I'm going to use a dry rag to wipe away and then a wet wipe to come in and really clean up those details so they're nice and crisp. 
because I'm working with a designer on this project, I need to get their seal of approval before I move on in the process. So I sent them photos of the finished paint finish to get their approval. Once that was done, I went ahead and moved on to my next steps. Let's pay some attention to the hardware from both of these pieces. The hardware from these pieces arrived in an original bronze finish, and while it was beautiful, it doesn't match the metal details that are gonna be used in this room. So the designer sent me that we're gonna be using a white gold on some of the lamps and the bed legs and things like that. So I wanna make my hardware match. I'm using Redesign with Prima Decor Wax, and this is a white gold color that I'm just applying over the original bronze finish after I had given them a thorough cleaning. Once I've got that gilding wax laid on, I'm gonna coat these in a coat of clear lacquer to protect the wax. The difference from the original finish is very subtle, but it's gonna match those white gold details in the room much better. Next, I mixed up a custom wax. I mixed a little bit of black wax into some white wax to create this soft gray. And that's because black wax I feel like would be too overpowering on these really subtle neutral colors. With my gray wax all mixed up, I'm gonna brush it into the innermost crevices of this piece and then softly smooth it out using a fluffy brush. This just gives a light smoky detail to the edges of this and it really accentuates some of the curves and moldings on this piece. This finish is all about the subtleties. When you're working with light colors like this, it doesn't take a lot to make differences. And so just this little bit of wax goes a long way. With all my glaze and wax details done, I also sent these photos to the designer to get their seal of approval because my next step is to add the transfers. I sent the designer several photos of different transfers that we could use and this customer chose two that she really loved and I did incorporate both of them into this project. This first one is a transfer that I was able to cut apart into individual pieces and really fit them to the front of this desk. The one rule from the customer I had was no red flowers so I made sure that I didn't use any of the red colors on this piece. I cut each flower out that I wanted to use, I dry fit them to the area on my desk, and then I rub them on using the stick that comes in the package with the transfer. I pull away the clear backing sheet as I rub the transfer on, leaving it in place over the paint. On this piece, I did decide to wrap a little bit of detail up onto the top of the desk, so when she's using the desk, she'll just have a little reminder of that pop of color that's down below on the body. When I'm doing pieces that have a lot of detail like this too, I also try to keep my transfer onto the flat faces of the furniture piece as much as possible. If you get them down onto those really detailed moldings, it can cause the, the transfer to split and crack and look kind of messy. Once I pull that clear backing sheet away, I just use a razor blade and a little bit of my fingernail to work that transfer into some of those really deep crevices. I was really able to cut this transfer apart into smaller pieces and customize it to fit this desk. So I can cut apart the leaves and use them where I feel like I have empty spaces like this one right here. This is actually a really fun process. This is part of that design process that really brings out your creativity. Um, I actually think there's an art to applying transfers and making them fit your piece and not look like a million other pieces that, that exist out there. Transfers are a great way to add a pop of color. You can see how these colors really stand out against the neutral backdrop that I used on this paint. I really think it gives a unique look to furniture that you can't get anywhere else. I sprayed this cute little desk in two coats of Wiseau matte varnish and this piece is complete. It's staging day. I just staged it to look like a desk with a telephone and some books on top and a little vanity chair that I keep in my staging pieces. This was a really fun process to work with a designer and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. As always, you can find links for everything I used in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll click that subscribe button for weekly painting tutorials here at Brush by Brandy on YouTube.